What's going on, guys? Another instant reaction here right after the Flyers defeated the Pittsburgh Penguins to open their 2021 season 6-3. to three, A big win for the Fly guys as they defeated their rival, and they start off 1-0. Mark, I'm going to cheers this for you as a as a celebration for the Flyers opening up this season. Big 1-0, huge victory, and uh, lots of performances, lots of topics to talk about. Mark, how you doing? And then what's your first reaction really to this big win by uh, the Philadelphia Flyers? Well, obviously I'm doing great after that decisive win. It looked like, <clears throat> excuse me, it looked like, you know, throughout the game, like we were talking about before. Um, and, and as we were talking throughout the game, looks like Flyers were getting obviously ahead after that first goal. And then they were letting the Penguins back in. But, you know, just the resilience and, and the focus of this team and the depth, um, honestly, is what I really think propelled them to this um, win. And, and of course, it's not only the the win because we did expect this, um, obviously coming into the season. And in our previous episode, we discussed that this this Pittsburgh Penguins team is a little run down and getting a little on the older side while while the Flyers are getting a lot younger. And we saw that, um, you know, no, you don't have to look any further than Joel Farabee's second year in the league, and and we'll dive into that a little more. Shout out to Connor for picking him as the breakout player of the year. Don't worry, I'll mention. I but, know, man. But yeah, he, I mean, just, you know, he looked great as a young player. Um, you know, you have guys building off from last year, like Hayes, great uh, rebound goal there, just stick down easy. TK looked like he was coming out with a lot of energy and looked like he was pretty upset from last year. So, you know, obviously Hart had that one brain cramp, gave it to Crosby. He was great at, you know, batting stuff down and he buried that, but you know, other than that, I, I think this team looked great. Defense looked great. They were really getting involved. Obviously, new addition Eric Gustafson. So, you know, I just can't say enough about this team, and and I'm very excited and happy with what I saw tonight. Yeah, Gustafson had uh, you know two assists uh, tonight. Excuse me, <clears throat> had two assists on the power play. He looked fantastic, leading uh, you know that kind of that chain Gustafson role. And we knew coming into the season, Eric Gustafson was more of this offensive defenseman and. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of questions with Gus Bear and, and he was put on the COVID-19 protocol before the game, but Gustin came in and played really well. JVR got the first goal, Nolan Patrick his first goal in like over a year uh, on the second one. Ro um, obviously, Raffle got a goal from Walton's great pass and TK got a goal. Glenn Blom is, is, is uh, first point back, which from, uh, you know, cancer diagnosis, it was a great uh, moment as well. It kind of went under the radar. We didn't really know until after because the, they struck again with the A's goal from uh, from Farabee and Giroux. But really, um, a, a great performance from Joel Farabee. Four points look fantastic. Um, and I and I, I listen. I, I I picked him to be a breakout player. I didn't think he'd get four points in the first uh, game. That was a little you know bolder than my expectations, but. He looked fantastic. I think that line with him, Hayes, and Giroux was awesome. I think they work so well together. I think Giroux is not really uh, a guy that has so much pressure on him offensively. I think when you play with a guy like Hayes, he's two-way, big uh, in the prime of his career. And then Joel Farabee has so much offensive prowess as a, at such a young age. It's so easy for Giroux to play with those two guys. <clears throat> Another line that really stuck out to me was the uh, the second line with Coos, Limblom, and TK. I, I love that line. They're picking up where they left off last year. Limblom looks a lot better than he did, obviously. Uh, he looks a lot better than he did going into the bubble. I know he didn't have a lot of time to prepare for the, the playoffs, but TK looks, you know, another year better, and we all know what Sean Couturier is made of. And, and the third line, which I thought played okay, it struggled at times, but Patrick obviously got a goal. Uh, JVR got a goal, and then um, Vorchek played a pretty solid game, but I like that line as well. And then the fourth line, too, with um, Lawton, uh, Albe Kubel and uh, Raffle and they picked up a goal and each of them got an assist. So it was, it was a great performance all around and offensively and defensively it was pretty impressive too. I thought Provorov obviously played a great game and and uh, Gustafson, like I said earlier, had a great game as well. And and I think that we were talking a lot about um, you know the Lane rumors earlier in the year about adding an offensive player of his you know skill set would really put this team over the top. But when I look at this roster, I think that the offensively you know, for the Flyers, they're pretty good going forward. I don't think they need anything right now, but I think defensively is something that when you look down the line before the trade deadline, that's something, uh, you know, they may have to address because, you know, pro Rolf with his D line partner is still up in the air, but um, I don't want to get too far out of myself. I know we're just reacting to this game, but all in all heart, I thought played pretty good, you know, not to, I think he probably would say he could have a better game, but, 
I thought he played, um, you know, fine, uh, unless that, you know, second goal he gave up with that bad turnover that Crosby put in the net. So there's a lot of positives with this game. Um, I think this team is one of the best in user confidence, and I'm excited to see where they go from here. Yeah, and, and just to go over that stat line real quick um, for both goaltenders, were obviously Carter Hart and, and as I was discussing in the previous episode, I think the Flyers have the best goaltender in this division. Um, and even seeing tonight, I stand by that. And, and I, you know, I think I'm even more positive in, in that comment. Um, first goal, you know, it was just early. And, and I think it was just early season, just not, you know, just not there right away. And, and that's all right. Second goal, obviously, we went over bad play. Just, you know, probably will never make that play again. Just go up the boards. And third goal was a good goal on him. So, you know, when it all boils down, it's really like you let in one, if, if you ask me. Um, and, and I think if the Flyers can get that type of goaltending moving forward, they're going to have nothing but success um, in this division. So Carter Hart, three goals against, 31 saves on 34 shots. First career win, uh, or I mean first win in the season, excuse me. On the other end, this is, you know, again, to my point, this is where I think some of these teams are going to fall short. And, and Tristan Jari coming into his first year is really being a solidified starter um, and, and being the number one guy for the Penguins. He uh, had six goals against 19 saves um, and obviously a loss. So, you know, it, it just goes to show that if the Flyers can keep this offensive intensity up and, and I know line A and, and how you said would bolster this lineup, I think this lineup's perfect just the way it is. And I think the Flyers have a great mix of, of depth guys, grinder guys and skilled guys. If you, you know, quite frankly, if, if Fairby plays up to this level, you have Konechny, you have Coots, who's just an incredible two-way forward. You have Pat, Patrick coming back in the form, already has a goal and, and a goal in the inner squad game. So, I mean, this team looks great. Obviously, the biggest challenge is going to be playing these teams in their division multiple times as they have a back-to-back. They're going to go to Pittsburgh on Friday. Um, so, you know, this is, this is where it's really going to tell if this team is for real um, and if they can win this division, if they can win these back-to-back uh, divisional games. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of these Penguins Flyers matchup, not only Friday as they play the second game of the year, but really just down the, in, during the season and, and later in, in the couple you know months of this season. It's going to be a lot of matchups between the Capitals and the Penguins and, and the Boston Bruins. And it's going to be exciting, but it's going to be a battle. And it was getting chippy. I know Pierre McGuire on the broadcast said it was getting chippy in the second period. And he said that he thinks it's going to carry over to Friday. So <clears throat> I'm sure the Penguins are happy about their performance tonight. So you have to expect them to. Um, be coming out fast in the first period on Friday and uh, the Flyers got to be ready for it. But really the, the good thing about reacting to this game, there's not a lot of negatives that go over. Um, I thought that, you know, the Penguins, you know, they kept it close to the third period, but like you said earlier, they just, they just ran out of juice and the the depth of the Flyers uh, persevered. And, and we saw that, I think there was like 12 forwards or 12 Flyers players with at least one point or something like that. I saw that stat on Twitter. So, the the performance by them tonight was was awesome and i'm excited to see where this team goes so really before we uh you know we end this instant reaction um obviously we're going over i was watching a little bit of the Tampa bay lightning stanley cup uh the stanley cup ceremony as they were you know going to raise the banner i know right now the canadians are playing the maple leafs as of right now the canadians are up 3-1 but um really the rest for tonight there's not a lot of uh there's gonna be no eastern division games until tomorrow obviously the Bruins and Devils play and then the Islanders and Rangers play but um, where do you think they stand as of right now the Flyers within that Eastern division Um, do you still hold true to your position that they're they're still to the top next to Boston and teams like Washington or do you think that you know after the performance tonight do you think they surpasses them and that they are the clear number one favorite in that division I don't want to jump the gun here and, and, you know, throw them in that clear number one spot because they are playing some very competitive teams. I mean, we haven't seen how the Rangers gel yet. I uh, got Panarin coming off a potential MVP season last year and, and some pieces getting added around him and, and some very good young ones, especially in uh, Alexis Lafreniere. You got Zibanejad. I uh, got the Caps. You got, you got the Islanders who are going to be a heck of a team as they are every year. But, you know, here's my number one thing. Obviously, the goaltending. And it's going to be, you know, a small sample size in one game. Um, but the goaltending needs to stay where it's at. Hart looked phenomenal. He looked like himself after that first and that, you know, that brain cramp in, in the second um, with that goal. But he looked like himself. He played really well. And and when you can get production down the board um, from <clears throat> every guy on every line, 
you're going to be successful. So if the Flyers can keep doing that and, and it really shows no signs of stopping in this system AV has, I think they can be the number one. Um, I think that's how they're going to beat these more um, skilled teams as, as the Caps. You know, they have Ovechkin, they have Kuznetsov, they still have a, you know, Backstrom, Verana. So I think if the Flyers can get production down the board and, and have good goaltending, I think there's no reason that they can't finish number one in this division. I agree. I don't want to put them obviously in that class yet. And the Penguins are a fringe, I think, playoff team. I still think they'll have a shot. They'll be right around that four or five area within this Eastern division, but the teams you have to look out for and which I'm interested to see where the Flyers match up against is obviously Boston and uh, Washington. I think Boston's obviously, I think clear, clearly better than, well, we don't know yet because there's been no games played, but I'm expecting Boston to be better than Washington and, and Boston being the biggest threat within the division. But, you know, there's still going to be a lot more games to be played, 64 more games for the Flyers to, uh, to show off and hopefully, um, you know, clutch a playoff berth and and make a run this uh, again in this postseason. So I, I'm really happy about the performance they showed tonight, and I think there's a lot of positives to be taken away from it. And really, it's just exciting to see them uh, defending them finally back, and ex- and I'm excited to see them play Friday as well. It's it's gonna it's gonna be a, uh, a, a, a it's gonna be more of a, a sprint more so than a marathon that we usually see with these hockey seasons. So I'm excited to see where they go from here. Yeah, and I was, you know, I was going to say to wrap up, we should probably pick, you know, one guy we were really impressed by. But yep. I think Joel Farabee ran away. I, I know you're going to say him, and I'm definitely going to say him. Four points again in, in the opening um, game and, you know, changing to number 86 from 49. That looks beautiful. Yeah. He looks like a superstar. <laughs> and, and um, you know, hopefully he can keep it up. I think he definitely has, you, you know, real quick before we do go, I do want to say just the way he was playing tonight, the plays he was making. He looked like a different player than last year. And I know Jordan uh, Hall, when we had him on the podcast, was saying, you know, he looks more comfortable with the puck. He likes holding on to it a little longer and making plays. And on that first goal, he could have, you know, skated to the corner and turned it over. He could have threw one on the net, maybe wide. Instead, he turned back with it, threw it up to Gustafson, up the wall on his backhand, and it led to a goal. So, obviously, he he had that beautiful berry in the pocket of of the net um, on Jari. So, you know, real positive things from Faraby and, and, you know, this team looks incredible in game one. So, um, you know, yeah. great, great game. And I'm excited for Friday as well. Yeah. And I know, I agree. Faraby probably is the best player from this performance, but I'll go Nolan Patrick too. I thought he looked good. Uh, even though he finished in minus two, but he did finish with a goal. And I thought he looked fast. I thought he looked like he was involved in a lot of plays, especially in, in the dirty areas. So I thought it was a good first performance for Nolan Patrick to get back after that, you know, season, the migraine disorder. So, you know, there's a lot of positives. I thought that was a really key positive as well. And um, yeah, I, I like where all the lines stack. I like how this team's rostered and I like where they are at. So that's going to wrap it up for us for this instant reaction. Make sure you follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Connor Mark Show. Also make sure you subscribe to this YouTube page. Make sure to keep up with all our content as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week.